At Alchemy Labs, we are deeply committed to creating VR for everyone. This includes pushing the state of the art of accessibility in XR. As the medium evolves, it's important for us to start designing accessible experiences from the onset. While we are unable to create a set of best practices due to the ongoing explosive growth of the industry, we are able to share some of our current designs. These techniques will greatly expand the possible user space of XR experiences, and we'd love to see more developers adopt these. Our innovative subtitling system, Gloss, was created with an XR-first mindset. Gloss intelligently displays subtitles to the users in a way that feels natural to XR. Great care is taken to make the subtitles as readable as possible while prioritizing the comfort of the player. If you would like a deep dive into Gloss, the subtitles and XR talk from the Games Accessibility 2020 conference covers the technical details of the project. We design our games to not require reading text. Every piece of critical information is also displayed as an icon and voiceover. This has the added benefit of making our game more accessible to non-English speakers without requiring extra localization effort. That being said, we still strongly recommend localizing your content if you can afford to. We do extensive testing from the seated position to ensure our games are accessible for players who must remain seated. We use this testing to adjust the layout of our worlds to better accommodate seated players. We design all our services and interactive stations to be adjustable to help ergonomically accommodate anyone playing the game. We also developed an intelligent object retrieval system to return items that players may be unable to reach. Of course, we allow a player to chuck away an object if they want to. Having complicated controls that involve two hands is a limiting factor for accessibility. Our games have a diegetic design. The controllers only use a small number of buttons, and the interactions focus on the object's presence in the world, instead of complicated button combinations. Yet, we still face the issue of users who can only use a single controller. This led us to develop our one-handed mode. This mode automatically activates when only one controller is connected to the hardware. Our game then modifies itself slightly to account for the timing and presence of a single controller. To the player, this appears seamless and has the added benefit of also assisting players who have a single controller run out of battery. We take great care to address the needs of our players who are colorblind. We work to minimize the amount of data that relies exclusively on color cues by using a combination of text, audio, and iconography. We test with toolkits and colorblind players to ensure we are not missing anything. In the case where color is a required attribute for the experience, we developed a set of patterns. These patterns always correspond with a specific color in the world, so something that is orange will have the same pattern on a fish or a climbing wall rock. This lets our colorblind players play the game even if they cannot distinguish any color whatsoever. The needs of accessibility and the design of your XR experience can be complementary if you include the right features. Shorter human mode is a feature that raises the internal player scale. In other words, it makes the player larger, allowing them to reach higher and farther in the virtual environment. It was originally designed for players who could not reach high up items in our game, and through its use has expanded to allow object distance to be less of an obstacle for players without sacrificing the design of the game. There is still a lot more work to be done to make XR accessible from the ground up. We will keep innovating and encourage everyone working in the medium to do so as well. Play test with users who have disabilities, share your findings and techniques, and together we can forge an accessible future.